Here's a saying for you. We like to think that's true in the antique business at least. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Good morning, viewers. It is literally the crack of dawn in Cincinnati, Ohio. I am at the Peddler's Flea Market. I stayed overnight here in the car because I got here late enough that it didn't make sense to get a hotel. So I've been listening to and watching through the window. It is now 7 a.m. and all these dealers have set up and we're going to go take a look and what, see what they brought. This is both indoors and outdoors and I understand that they do bring antiques and vintage as well. Some of them are just setting up so let's go see. One thing about being this early is that you see a lot of this. People are just starting to get things out, but these folks have some older stuff, so let's take a look. I see a nice brass bucket here, but it's priced at 45, and that's certainly the top end of retail. However, they've got some nice Manhattan glass, including the one with the bale, and that's something a little more unusual, so I'm gonna ch check in on that. Okay, well, look at this pile I got for 50 bucks for all of it. <laughs> The scale, they wanted 40, but I bundled it with the Viewmaster and the reels and a pin and the Manhattan piece with the handle and got the whole thing for 50. And I'm just really excited. The scale should sell for 95. They're very popular. Having the weights is so important and the Manhattan piece is unusual and just cool stuff. Of course, every time someone new opens, it causes a commotion and you can tell this is just open because look at the commotion. Let's see what the commotion is about. It looks like there's some old bikes. An old chips can. A South Africa poster. Cute old dollhouse. A crazy monkey figure. And tools. That seems to be the big attraction. Not for me. Here's something fun you don't see very often. Now, this is the old type vacuum cleaner. There was a time when this is how you had to vacuum. You actually had to pump the vacuum. And then the drawback would suck the stuff off the floor. This is going to date to about 1900. This one's made in Muncie, Indiana by the Feeney Company. And look at that, you have one attachment. That's it. And they do this crazy sort of painted copper striping as the design. These were done about 1900 to 1910. And as primitive as they are, when you see a Dyson today, well, it has this ancestor to thank for its existence. It's leaning up against an old milk can. These old vacuums are really cool looking. They're not a really easy sell, however, because they're just sort of a novelty. Here's an old fireplace insert, a gas one. Some hockey skates. Okay, this looks like hell. I paid ten dollars. You're gonna think, why did he pay ten dollars? Well, it's a Japanese block print. It's Mount Fuji you can see it came from Japan. It has the mark there. I wiped away enough of the dirt and probably nicotine stain to see that it actually is clean enough underneath. It doesn't look like the foxing got into the print. That's the important part. See the little dots there? Not in the print. So you're not going to see a bunch of little spots. Block prints of scenes in Japan are starting to be pretty popular and on the back we can see this has a nice older label for Suter's Art Store. I assume that's here in Cincinnati. So I think that could be worth 50 to $75 pretty easily. Plastic candy canes. Somebody might like those, but I don't know that they're that old. Let's see what this is under here. Looks like a souvenir. Oh, and it's Florida. Now that's kind of convenient. These with the fake wood, which I believe are actually a form of plastic, are not as desirable. 
but it is before, no, it is 1970s because it shows Disney World. I look for pre-Disney stuff because it's the most collectible. It does have Silver Spring, Cypress Garden, Sea Aquarium, the Monkey Jungle. It's got a bunch of the old attractions. It's got Cape Kennedy, made in Taiwan, made of genuine bamboo, and it's $5. Um, you know, if it was a little older, $5 would be a bargain. It'd probably sell in Florida, but I'm not really that enamored of it for that price. Cute little decanter guy here. Drink at Joe's. Shaving lotion. Ooh, delicious. Kerosene, turpentine, sherry, beer, scotch, and then we, we pay if you drink battery acid. Looks like he might have had a little. All the booze that's fit to use. This is going to be Japanese. It's very lightweight and kind of cheap. It used to have a music box underneath it. That's why you see that little mark there. So because of that, it's as is, but someone would buy it and use it the way it is if it's inexpensive. So we'll ask about that. The red paint's still good. That's important. Let's see what else is on this. I see succulents. And let's see what else we've got here. Okay, these look like older happy faces. These are little magnets. Yes. Okay, I think these actually have some age and they're a quarter. Might have to have those. They make me think of Yvonne Thrifty Rich. She loves the happy face stuff. So do I. Couple of Coleman lanterns there. Got a bunch of new shoes. Here's a big old stack of records, and Sarah Vaughn, the fact that it's somebody who was interesting and kind of jazz-oriented means that might be a stack worth looking through. It's great when you don't see classical on top. These are kind of crazy lamps here. They would need some shades. Here's a big old steamer trunk. This is one of the ones that opens up from the front and lifts up so that everything stacks up high like a little dresser or chest of drawers. It's been painted pink, which is not my favorite thing about it, but it's pretty cool from about 1910. A little different than you usually see. This looks like it's an old decanter again. Some old tennis rackets. Sometimes these can be valuable if you have somebody interesting on them like Billie Jean King and the webbing is all good. These are just McGregor Masters. Bunch of old woodworking planes. Stanley and the Bailey are going to be the more desirable but I like the ones that are wood. Probably. Bait Canteen. That's something people collect especially in Kentucky. I sell a lot of those in my store. And this guy is a bar tool set, also 1970s. So a few kind of interesting things. I don't know if I need any of them or not. Well, there is just a bunch of stuff spread on the ground here. I see the base for a good Fenton cranberry lamp sitting in that brass vase. I also see a bunch of tools. Looks like the cranberry vase just sold. And then the crockery jug. Okay, well, the jug with the heart on it is priced at $175, and that gentleman there said, he is crazy, and that's true. These folks have a little concertina, this harp tone. These are fun, and they sell, mainly as decorative items, but they still have to work, and this one is missing one of the stoppers and that is unfortunately a deal breaker for me here you go here's an old seaberg this would have been one of the ones you sat at your table with this one says it's got three times in love by tommy james and it's got said in one year love by stevie wonder so 
That's kind of cool. And then down here, I just bought this. This is an old clamp. Just really kind of a neat thing. I pay ten dollars because it's got good graphics and it's cast iron and it's old. Someone will give up twenty-five for that, I think. All right, so I am just wrapping up here, and everyone thinks I'm selling because I've got the car open, but I'm actually buying rather than selling. And I've got a couple of Afghans here I just bought. I paid thirty bucks for the three of them. You can kind of see them behind me there. One of them's pretty big, that's why I paid that price. And then this gal here, this is Earth, Wind, and Fire by Austin Sculpture. It's got a nice signature on it, and it says Acoma. And it's got the Austin product signature on the bottom. And I paid $5 for this, and one of them just recently sold for $79. So I'm pretty happy about that. Nowhere near the people here today, brothers, there was yesterday. <laughs> that is full. They want to spot the moon. Well. I had some fun. I found a few good things. I really liked the scale I bought, and I think that that Japanese woodblock was a great deal, and the other stuff was fun. So I've just about hit this one already, though. I'm finding that the dealers who don't have the stuff out of the car are more interested in jawing than getting stuff out, probably because they were here yesterday. I guess it's a Saturday and Sunday thing. So I think I'm going to go off to the next flea market and come along with me. Let's go. Okay, so this is the next flea market. This is a big tourist attraction. They advertise all over the place. I'd seen stuff for it before, and they have all these really cool critters. So what's not to love? This looks almost like a theme park of flea marketing. Okay, so we're bumping our way across the parking lot towards the front. It costs $2 to get in here. You pay by the car load, so it's $2 a car. So come with your friends if you're cheap and then you can bug them for a quarter a piece. Looks like there are some outdoor dealers. I'm gonna be more interested in those, I have a feeling, because I have a hunch a lot of the indoor dealers are permanent dealers dealing in socks and logo gear and stuff made in China, but we'll see. But I see some antiques right in the very first space here, so we're gonna have some fun and take a look. The old Disney school bus lunchbox some older and newer roosters. Yeah, it sounds good. Beautiful sound. Yes. And how much are your old license plates? I think 20 or 25. 20 to 25, okay. Uh, that one is 25 because it's the uh, second one, but well, that's for pair. For the pair, 25? Oh, yeah. I see, okay. I might be interested in a couple of those. I'll take a look. Thank you. And they've got cool stuff hanging from the rafters, but I don't think it's for sale, and that's the stuff I would like to sell. Ooh, scary. This table with the combination brass and lucite, this is coming back, all of this brass stuff. I have a feeling this would do well in Florida. It looks like the brass is slightly pitted. If it's not too bad and it can be clean, it's worth getting, but you do have to be careful about that. Here's a saying for you. We like to think that's true in the antique business at least. Well, here's a different kind of swung vase, almost more of a handkerchief vase. This is Fenton Thumbprint, and I haven't actually seen it finished in this manner before. So that's a little bit unusual. I find it kind of attractive. I think I will ask about that. Mid-century carnival glass basket there. This piece looks like it is actually Viking, but in the Georgian pattern, which is kind of different for the 60s era. And then some little Ohio River crackle glass bottles. The smoke color is pilgrim glass. Well, like a lot of flea markets that are permanent indoor, you have tons of little figurines and lots of precious moments and kind of the usual things you see at flea markets. But down here, we have a 1930s Czech 
wall vase with the bird and the birdhouse. And that one doesn't have a price on it, so I guess I'll ask. I've had this before, Brooke Shields. This is what she looked like when she was young. She really looks pretty similar now. It's amazing. She's my age and she's hardly aged at all. And her eyebrows actually are not as prominent as they used to be. Give you a little bit of the lay of the land here because this place really is big. And they sell everything. Just not as many antiques and vintage things as I'd like so far. But there's still hope. Well, so far this seems more like a place to take your family if they're not into antiques, but you want something to do together. However, there does look to be an antique section, at least I see a sign that says antique, so maybe that will be the section that I would run to while I let the rest of my family look at safety yellow construction outfits. But I am going to make a left turn to Albuquerque, or Antiquakirky. A whole lot of Fenton hobnail milk glass and some Westmoreland old quilt and grape. Old quilt is this pattern here with the squares cut off by diamonds. That's why they call it old quilt because it has that quilted look. There's your grape pattern and then of course the Fenton hobnail. The hobs are always pointy on Fenton. That's how you can tell them apart easily even if it's not marked because a lot of Fenton was not marked up until the 1970s with a permanent mark before they had these paper labels like you see on the bottom of this one here. Let me see if I can bring it in a little bit. It's upside down, but you get the idea. People would wash those off, and so the earlier pieces, you have to know what you're looking at. Well, I have to admit, this is all making me very hungry. And it all looks delicious. And over here we've got t-shirts. Really cool murals on a lot of these buildings. So it's got a lot of the look of old, but I'm just not finding old stuff here. This place is big. It's cute. It's got a lot of fun visual attractions. It is mostly permanent booths, and I found a few things, but not a lot. I don't see a lot of people selling old stuff or people who just showed up, but that might be in another area, so we're going to press on. And in the meantime, while I'm thinking about it, if you haven't already subscribed, if you'll hit that button below, it doesn't cost you anything, but it helps us a lot. We also do have memberships. You can hit the join button or look at our video about that. And also, if you'll hit like, that will notify you of future videos. Now let's get back to shopping. Okay, so we've moved across I-75 to the other giant flea market on the other side of the freeway here at Ohio Route 63. And this one is called Treasure Isles. Now, this one, just like the other one, charges $2 a carload to get into park. That's their admission fee. It also has a big, giant, permanent building with permanent vendors, who I suspect are mainly selling new stuff. But it appears that this place is a lot busier than the one across the freeway. And they also have a whole slew behind me of outdoor vendors. So my hope is that some of these outdoor vendors are going to have antique and vintage items and that this is going to be a worthwhile trip. So let's go find out. Okay, so at least we're seeing you stuff. That's a good sign. And a lot of new stuff as well. What we're looking for are old things, vintage things. A lot of flea markets have box lots of stuff that they buy that is surplus or damaged goods that fell off a truck. Not interesting to me though. I am looking for old stuff. Here's the first old thing I've seen. It's this old gas stove. A lot of those have asbestos in them, so even though they're cool looking, I don't really like to buy those because they worry me. Oh, that's right. that's There's a few afghans here. The colors are so-so. We'll see if the prices are good. Well, if you can't afford an entire Tesla, you can get this piece of the fender for only $850 and then save up for the rest. Let's see who made this doesn't have a mark on it. It feels heavy like American, and I like the thumb rest, but I don't have much luck selling them if they're not marked. Well, me and car parts, but I bought this for a particular reason. 
The shape is obviously 1950s. It was priced $5. People like these spotlights. They seem like they sell for $25, $30 a piece these days. But the really good thing about this one is it was made to be mounted so that you also had a rear view mirror on the outside of the car. This would have been from an era when not all cars came with two side mirrors. That was not standard equipment until the 1950s. So that's going to make this a little more unusual than the ones we generally see, and I think that it might actually be a little more valuable. So that was a nice score. This looks like a Canadian goose that's stuffed. I don't know Canadian geese to be endangered anywhere. They seem quite plentiful, so I'm sure it's legal to own. But that's something to be aware of with taxidermy. Lots of things that were legal to capture at one time are now not legal to have or to sell. So don't just go buying anything you see. I ended up with a consigner who had been a hunter. He had a red-tailed hawk. I had to give it back to him because it would have been confiscated by the state, so he kept it. Well, we're going to see some vintage toys in here. Even some of the 90s stuff is collectible now. I'm actually planning to take some from a consigner, so I guess I'm going to learn about it. Here's a cool Konka G with the fold down front. I remember these when I was a kid, but it's got a big crack in the back. A lot of these got played with hard. Well, Pete Rose is collectible not just because of playing in Cincinnati, because that's where I am, but also because he is banned from baseball and the Hall of Fame permanently, despite all of his greatness as a player, because he was involved with gambling. It's not my gig, but I bet there's retail arbitrage to be had here, because there's lots of stuff that looks like it's cheap for what it is. Jeffrey at Real Nifty Vintage bought another piece by this company recently. This is Jeanette Glass out of Pennsylvania, the orange with the lid here. And this is the Constellation pattern. This is popular in the 1960s. It was probably the most modernist thing they did with that repeating stylized cross pattern creating all of those shapes. It's Amberina. I've met a few collectors of this over the years. It's not as well known or popular as some of the other glass of that time. And then we've got this cute little caddy here. Nice dresser piece. Although I've seen people use them as a planter, I've seen people use them as a smoking stand. Personally, when I had one, I put my wallet in the front and my coins in the back. You know what game that is? The bell here is Fenton's Lily of the Valley from the late 70s. It does have the clacker. They have it priced at 15. That's probably about right on that. Now these fellows have some neat stuff. They've got a bunch of tip trays here. I like the woman for Indiana Business College at the top there. This is an upside down pocket mirror. If you turn him upside down, he's frowning because he didn't use these varnishes that he's supposed to use. The old paperweight is from the St. Louis Union Station, which suffered a terrible flood in 1904 and had to be rebuilt. And then this is something you don't see often either. This is a Civil War era amputation bone saw. It looks like a hacksaw, because that's basically what they did. If you were going to become gangrenous, they would have to cut off a limb. It was a terrible thing. But this was done by Herrenstein and Son for the U.S. Army Hospital Department. It's priced at $150, which is about what they go for now. Here we've got a cool thing. This is by Wedgwood, and this shows the various leaders of NCR, National Cash Register, which was based in this building in Dayton, Ohio, near here. Apparently there's a whole collection of NCR stuff. You can see the Wedgwood Bowl, which was done probably around 1980, will look, shows various old cash registers and machines of theirs, 1984 and it's got its presentation box. They have that priced at 30. It's very specialized, but look at all the other cool NCR stuff they've got. They've got the old spindles, the box for the supplies, and then a whole collection of desk things and awards and things that would have been given to this person over the years. They've got the old guards badge, the rulers with the thermometers that are for marketing research, which I think I might buy at that price. I think those are really interesting. They're 15 a piece. I think there's room in that. This is a commemorative clock. This is from some sort of a derby they ran in 1938. 
1916 International Conventions in Cincinnati are these letter openers. And then the 1951 Open House. And then when they started doing other things, like printing on microfiche, here's a paperweight that shows the smallest Bible in the world in Lucite. And then you've got a testing device marked MCR. So this is really fun. When you're in an area that has corporate headquarters, you can sometimes find these collections of lots of interesting things from one company or one person who collected the company or someone in the area who collected the company. Here's all these tax. This is a neat thing. It's a cool collection to see, and I'm going to take some of it with me, I think. There's a neat old balance scale, and then in front of it is the clock I just bought that runs backwards. I got mine for $10 at the show I just did, and I'm on the way back from. It was the last thing I bought, but it did not have this box. In fact, I've never seen the box before. That is pretty cool. The Crazy Clock from Spartus. It was just a cheap novelty in its time. They're hard to find in running condition, but when you do, they sell for about $30 or $40. And maybe more with the box. Haven't had the box before. Here's a guy who's got some old stuff we'll take a look at here. First of all, let's put this down and see what the... Ah, okay. So this is hull pottery with the horse in the 50s colors. Same colors they did Ebb Tide in. This little one here is Weller. $19, not a bad price. That would definitely have sold at my show had I had it. It's not a well-marked piece, but it does have the Weller embossed stamp. You may be able to pick it out on there. Just the ER is really showing. Candlewick with the etching. That used to be so popular, Imperial Glass in Bel Air, Ohio made that pattern and it was really popular in its time. It doesn't sell like it used to, but it's still really well made. If you come into a collection, it's very nice to use. Some of the Peach Luster by Fire King. This may be a Hager piece, we'll see if it says on the bottom. No mark. There were other companies that did that sort of drip glaze, but it looks the most like theirs to me. The hull ducks. Swans. This is handsome. This is a book stand with the owl in the Art Nouveau. This was cast in about 1910. It's priced at 65. That's about what they go for. It's got nice patina, which was done when it was new, but it's aged really well. And then he also has the book slide, which is really cool here. These adjust so that you could put a whole stack of books in, and he's got 60 on this. It doesn't have the same coloration. It's got the brass coloration, but it is a really pretty piece. And his prices are very fair for what they are. They're not dealer prices, but for a collector, they are absolutely right on target. Now, his face either wore off or was never painted, but this is treasure craft, and the blue's hard to find, so I'm going to get him. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Got the little birds here. It's nice to see some really old stuff oh, out yeah, here. Really. Yeah, I appreciate I, you bringing it out. Well, even though there's not a ton of antique and vintage here, I have to say this is much more interesting than the other flea market. So I have learned my lesson. Go to Trader Isles on the west side of the freeway and leave the touristy place to the tourists. And that was Trader's World on the other side of the freeway. Because there's definitely a lot more if you are looking to resell that you're going to be able to buy here that's interesting beyond just new import stuff and stuff that's been sitting on a shelf for a long time. Now this here a lot of people might think is Murano glass but look at all the little tiny bubbles in it and the color is a little bit murkier. That is Mexican. People like it, it's a nice look, but it looks more like recycled glass. It's not Murano. 
My mother talks about having been in the steno pool, which meant the stenographer's group working for Wolverine Worldwide Insurance in Michigan. And this would have been her setup, something just like this. They would have all had a little metal typewriter desk. It's a very specific thing with the slides to put the typewriter on. And then you would have your check writing machine or a 10 key adding machine on the part that lifted up and it could roll around. And you also had a foot pedal, which I think was used to actually stop it in place. They've got 35 on the typewriter stand, only 35 on the typewriter. That's actually a pretty good deal for that because of the colored keys. Those have really gotten more interesting to people. It's got a scraper, otherwise I would buy it immediately at that price. Hard to believe. We used to use those as door stops at antique malls. And then I don't see a price on the check writer, but these Art Deco ones are also selling in a $35 range pretty typically these days. Okay, so here's a bunch of salt and pepper shakers I'm getting, and which one is Treasure Craft? Well, the one that is themed rather than a match set. That is a level with a square. The rest of them are all match pairs from Japan. All from the early 50s. Paying $3 a piece. Okay, let's see. So, we got a bunch of engine parts and blue ball jars. Big old insulator, but he's got some nice glass in the back here I want to take a look at. Yeah. Cranberry from the 80s, and these are pretty cool, the Presidential Decanter series. Those were popular in the early 70s. How are you? Okay. All right. That's all you do is play guitar. That is all I do. Well, hey, thanks for coming out today. And uh, we're going to play a lot of uh, originals. We're going to play some cover tunes. Hopefully we'll mix it up enough that everybody's going to hear something that they like. i got a good friend here today. I want to play his favorite tune. It's called Wrong and Right. There's a lot of flea markets that have bands come out, especially in the middle of the day when people are starting to get tired. It keeps them going and it's fun for entertainment. And I remember when I used to be in a band and I didn't get to play this kind of music, but I did get to play to keep people occupied. So I remember those days well. Well, I've got to say that beyond the rug sellers and the people with the magnetic signs, the key blank guy and the people selling new collectibles and hookahs, there were actually three or four people in this building selling old stuff. And some of these flea markets, you will see some antiques and vintage in the middle of all the new stuff. And I was really pleased. One gal had a bunch of just used stuff. She had this lovely cranberry glass pitcher with the enameling. It's a herringbone optic. You can tell looking at the bottom, it has a lot of wear. This is probably going to date back to about 1890. She sold it to me for $5 because to her it was just a pitcher. So I was very happy about that. I'm going to set that down. I have to do a little bit of a haul, but another thing I got is great copper fire extinguisher. I've been telling you that these are up to about a hundred and a quarter now sometimes. This one he sold me for $40. It does not have the innards, but so many people are just buying them for decorative that I figured that was okay. And besides, I can pack it full of stuff when I take it to a show. Anyhow, I had a lot of fun at this flea market. This is Trader Isles. This is the one to go to. People who have a lot of used goods to sell and they're selling them inexpensively. That's where you'll find the old stuff and in the middle of the old stuff you'll sometimes find some good collectible stuff so this was a good discovery i had a lot of fun this is george the antique nomad and i'm going to sign off for now but i'm with you on periscope instagram facebook and twitter thanks for joining me and we'll see you again soon for more antique and vintage adventures and have fun bye bye thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!